Thanks, Alonso, back with the special Stemagia report. June 1st marks the beginning of Atlantic hurricane season, so it only makes sense that we look at hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones. We'll learn what they are, how they are formed, how they are structured and measured, and what their effects are. Before I get started, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so you'll never miss another Stemagia video. Also, if you like Stemagia content, be sure to drop a like down below. And now back to today's topic. So what exactly are hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones? Hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones are giant rotating storms that form over warm, tropical, or subtropical waters. Many people ask, why do we hear different names for what seems to be the same thing? Well, that's because the name of a storm changes depending on where it forms. Hurricanes occur in the Atlantic Ocean and the Northeast Pacific Ocean, east of the International Dateline. Typhoons occur west of the International Dateline in the Northwest Pacific Ocean near Asia. Cyclones occur south of the equator in the Southwest Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean. For the purposes of this video, we will refer to these storms as tropical cyclones, as this is a generic way of describing these storms. These tropical cyclones also rotate in a different direction depending on where they are located. In the northern hemisphere, these storms rotate counterclockwise direction. This applies both to hurricanes and typhoons. In the southern hemisphere, the storms rotate in a clockwise direction. This applies to cyclones. So now that we have learned about what tropical cyclones are, let's talk about how they are formed. There is a recipe of key ingredients that when combined together the right way can cause a hurricane, typhoon, or cyclone to form. According to NOAA, the key ingredients for a recipe are warm ocean water at the surface at or above 80 degrees, warm moist air, and slight surface winds. Now that we know what the key ingredients are, let's explore the stages of development for a tropical cyclone. According to NOAA, the stages are a tropical disturbance, then the tropical depression, after that we have the tropical storm, and finally the tropical cyclone. A tropical con disturbance can form when warm air from the ocean rises, evaporates, and condenses forming clouds. This cycle of evaporation and condensation can cause the clouds to grow taller, and also causes circulation that revolves around the center. Eventually, a group of thunderstorm clouds forms. From this point, if the conditions are right, a tropical depression may form. The thunderstorms may grow larger and taller, and the number of thunderstorms may increase, and the surface pressure starts to decrease, and the winds begin to increase as they rotate around the center. If the wind speeds within the storm reach 25 miles per hour to 38 miles per hour, a tropical depression is formed. If the storm intensifies and the winds increase to 39 miles per hour, the storm is then classified as a tropical storm. Once that happens, the storm is named so that it's not confused with the other storms that may be forming as well. The name is picked from a system developed by the World Meteorological Organization. Finally, if the winds reach 74 miles per hour, the storm officially becomes a tropical cyclone. After forming, Tropical cyclones can increase in intensity and are given a rating based on their maximum sustained wind speed. Sustained wind speed means that the strength of the wind stays the same over a defined period of time. Meteorologists use a special scale called the Saffir-Simpson scale to select a rating. Tropical cyclones are rated from 1 to 5 with category 1s being the weakest and category 5s being the strongest. One more thing to remember about tropical cyclones is that they are fueled by warm, moist air from the ocean. When they move over land, they don't have access to their fuel source, so they begin to weaken. So we've talked about how tropical cyclones form. Now let's take a closer look at the parts of a tropical cyclone. There are three main parts, which are the eye, the eye wall, and the rain bands. The eye is the center of the storm, and the rest of the storm rotates around the center. The eye also happens to be the calmest part of the storm. 
The eye wall is an area immediately surrounding the eye. The eye wall has extremely tall clouds, and it's also the most dangerous part of a tropical cyclone. It contains the strongest winds and the heaviest rain. Finally, the rain bands are groups of cumulus clouds. They create a spiral pattern surrounding the eye and produce a lot of rain, and sometimes tornadoes there form there too. What are the effects of tropical cyclones? One of the deadliest effects of tropical cyclones is storm surge. Storm surge is when ocean water rises higher than its regular tide level and gets pushed onto land by hurricanes winds. For example, the storm surge in Hurricane Katrina in the United States was over 28 feet. According to the National Geographic, storm surge causes 90% of all tropical cyclone related deaths. Another effect of tropical cyclones is the destruction that their devastating winds cause. The high and sustained winds from a tropical cyclone can cause significant damage to homes and buildings. This debris can also injure people in the process. Another threat while hurricanes are on land is, tor is tornadoes. Tornadoes can form in the outer edges of the hurricane. Tornadoes can produce even more damage and can reach faster wind speeds compared to hurricanes. If you want to learn more about tornadoes, check out my previous video on that topic. So now you know all about tropical cyclones. Let's test your knowledge with the quiz question. According to Scientific American, what was the name of the largest tropical cyclone by diameter in the world? Was it A. Hurricane Sandy B. Typhoon Marsh C. Typhoon Haiyan or D. Typhoon Tip If you guessed D, Typhoon Tip, you are correct. Believe it or not, the diameter of the storm was over 1,300 miles or 2,200 kilometers. Scientific American says it's about the distance from New York City, New York, to Dallas, Texas, and the United States. Wow, that's a huge storm. Thanks for joining me in this Demage Your Adventure. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel, and if you like this video, make sure, be sure to drop a like down below. If you have any suggestions for future content on Demage you can send an email to Demage at Outlook.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.